Hello, everybody. It's me, Carmine DiStefano, the Bookman. They call him the Bookman. His rant's never ending. He's angry and he's loud and he has a lot of friends. If you have Alyssa Milano's number, you can always send it to Carmine DiStefano, the Bookman. That song don't make no sense. Hello, everybody. It's me, Carmine DiStefano, the Bookman. Back in 2001, on the PS1, Capcom released a hack-and-slash classic about a half-man, half-demon battling half of his own in what was called Devil May Cry. It combined shooting with swordplay. It had a wise-ass hero who couldn't die named Dante. Then, in 2003, Dante was moved to the PS2 in Devil May Cry 2. Then in 2005, once again on the PS2, Devil May Cry 3 came out. Then in 2008, Dante and Company returned for the fourth installment on the PS3 before rebooting it for some reason, which they called... Devil May Cry. How does the fourth compare? Well, since playing through all these hack and slash games has given me a severe case of carpal tunnel syndrome, I decide to employ the services of a new friend of mine to play through it for all of you. I introduce Hack and Slash Hank. Come on in here, Hank. Hey, Carmine. Hi, how are you? Shut up! I heard you have a problem. Well, I'd like to play through this game for all my fans, but I'm kind of, you know, invalid right now. Well, what kind of game is it? Is it a Hack and Slash? Hack and Slash game? I'm in! Oh, all right. Well, let's take a look at it together. Or I'll cut you! The game opens in a city street infested with demons that Dante has to... Whoa, wait, wait. That's not Dante. Nero. Nero? Wait, isn't that just Dante with a different arm? Now how can you make a new character out of the main character with just a different arm? I mean, that's just stupidity if you ask me. Wouldn't you say hack and slash Stanley? Quite preposterous, yes, quite preposterous. The real Dante breaks into this unholy gathering, killing Sanctus, his holiness. Nero frets for his woman named... Kyrie! Kyrie? You mean like... Nero fights Dante until Dante notices Nero's arm. He points out to Nero that the people he was saving were actually demons in disguise. Now he has to go. Adios, kid. Nero is sent out by Credo to find Dante. However, the castle exterior is under attack by hordes of demons. Nero uses his special abilities to break through the gauntlet. He then moves deeper into this empty area in the town where he meets Okay, Hack and Slash Hank, now here's your first boss fight. Can you handle it? You kidding me? You see these calluses? Years and years of button mashing madness, my friend. Give me your hand, fanboy. Just as I thought. All you RPG guys are the same. Fingertips as smooth as a stripper's ass. Get your hand out of my way. Whoop this wuss's ass till he says he needs to power up, then leaves. Next is Fortuna Castle, where Nero meets... Is that? Is that Lady Gaga? Sharply cut platinum hair, bizarrely scantily clad? It is Lady Gaga! Yeah! Further into the castle, Nero meets up with some hot tendrils who are connected to... <laughs> so this is what you really look like. Yes, yes, yes. Slash Jabba the Frog until he bitches about getting his big brothers. You see, they all want to join the party. I don't know, Hank, that would be a lot for you to fight. <laughs> Nothing I ain't done before, you blue-collar bitch. 
Meanwhile, Sanctus appears to be all right. We then meet. What shall be for me? Shh. Should he stumble upon my research facility? This is the last time I work with someone with a speech impediment. He's referring to the secret lab, where the demonic blade Yamato was broken in twain. You utilize Agnes's inventions to break the shield between you and him. When you get to him, he traps Nero, then mentions This pisses Nero off enough to merge Yamato, then attack Agnes in this rather crazy ass looking form. Agnes runs back to headquarters, where he meets with Credo, Sanctus, and in the woods, Nero is attacked by... Break this boa bitch down till she runs away. Nero then heads towards the main palace, where Credo reveals his angelic form. I have been chosen to take the next step in evolution, to become something far more than just a Ooh, hey, this looks like a pretty intense boss fight. Bring it on! When you kick it to Credo, he becomes his former self again. Nero then sees... ...who freaks out that he's got a demon arm. Agnes swipes her up into his grasp, then flies away. Track whack Agnes down to fight as an angel form as well, just a superpowered demon. After the battle, Agnes once again swipes, then keeps Nero from saving her. This leads him to... Later, Nero meets up with... What took you so long? This is a tough fight. Afterwards, Dante tells Nero about Yamato and its place with the Hell Gates. He mentions his father, Sparta, who did this thousands of years in the past. Nero and Dante decide to work together. We then learn... was actually Trish, Dante's woman. They assess the current situation. If the kid screws up, then I'll just have to kick his ass. You kick my ass, I kick your ass, Bullshit. and I can do it again. Nero finds Sanctus's savior. After they fight, Sanctus uses <laughs> to power up this giant savior. He then takes Nero to really get it going. This leaves Dante to stop the massive hell invasion. Why was the hell gate open? So the savior could be left to act as, well, a savior. Now Dante is the playable character, which is good because he kicks a lot of ass. You backtrack all the places Nero went to to beat each and every boss. This time, Dante kills them for good. And after each killing, he gets another power that turns into an extra piece of weaponry more powerful than the ones you already had. This makes the job a lot easier. The last boss he revisits, of course, is Agnes. They fight in the church that the original ceremony was going on in. Afterwards, Dante finishes Agnes off, takes back Yamato, closes the Hell Gates, then destroys the Hell Gates. It's time to face the Savior. You have to use these teleporters to dodge his massive firepower, as well as find his vulnerable crystal weak points. When he's weak enough, you see his health bar. You defeat it, so Dante can do this. If the exterior is solid... He wakes 
Nero up, who breaks out of the Savior's heart, I guess. Inside, he goes through another gauntlet where he has to fight each and every boss he fought before and Dante killed before. Then he meets up with a souped-up Sanctus. If you beat him, you rescue... Then go outside to meet Dante. They have a little talk before the Savior returns as Sanctus. All right, Hank, this is it, the last boss fight. Are you ready for this? That's what your mother said, and sister. Time the demon R strikes perfectly to finish the monster off. Afterwards, Dante goes his way as Nero defends his beloved from the remaining demon forces. And that's pretty much it. So what did we think of this game? Ha! I've had this much fun since I decapitated that Jehovah's Witness! It's easy to learn how to control. The hack and slash elements are well represented. I do wish the guns did a little bit more damage, had more to do with the killing of each creature. You can kill them with guns, but really, your sword is your best method. It's got another one of those interesting Capcom storylines, but the characters are very colorful. I do have to admit that Dante is a lot more fun to play through than Nero. He makes it a lot easier, flipping through all his different fighting styles and such. Personally, I didn't mind the love story. I didn't think it was completely necessary, but it didn't perturb me. The voiceover acting did a good job with the script that they were working with. I do have to admit, though, that the villains' intentions were rather up in the air. Did they want the savior to be a savior, to gain power? Did they want all these demons to destroy people before saving them? Why would they want so many people to be destroyed? Were they demons? What I don't really know what they were, per se. And they had a rather roundabout way of achieving whatever goal they were looking for. Since it's Capcom, it's nice to play through as a beefed up character. After you go through it once, you level up your character somewhat, go through it again with all those level ups, makes it a lot easier, and you can keep leveling them up until they're maxed out, which would be really good to play through. My only issue is, there's no real block method. Dante can use Safeguard, Nero can use the Shield, but really, there's no blocking, you have to dodge. That makes avoiding damage a little difficult, but it also adds to the challenge, so it's not all bad. Now that you've seen this game in action, it begs the question, why are they rebooting it in the next few months? Reboot? What the hell? Oh. We thank you all for watching, we have more for you soon to come, so stay tuned, take care, and have a great day. Your ass, and I can do it again.